If you have any traveling experience and you recognized one or more of those languages, it is a joy and a, a very happy serendipitous moment that Eric has provided for us because, let's face it, in this country, at this moment, in this day, there should be a lot of thankfulness in our hearts for what has happened in our town. And again, I, I just want to raise my vote of thanks to the first responders who are still on duty. Uh, as I drive up Soledad, I see the uh, police that have uh, situated themselves there on the, the old racetrack and uh, uh, for the fire who have situated themselves in Central Park. Uh, we, were, we were instructed on the radio many times to, to leave Bouquet Canyon uh, open, to not travel there. And uh, I believe that there was a lot of cooperation. There was a lot of cooperation. It was, it was frustrating, I will tell you, when I tried to uh, help, in some respects, people who were above Sierra Highway. This would be Esther and, and uh, Pedro. Uh, they were just barely above Sierra Highway at, on Soledad. And uh, there was a, what the police called a hard closure, meaning you can come out, but you're not coming back in. No cars in. So even as I did that, uh, you know, we cooperated and we went and parked Esther's car and uh, walked in, and uh, they are recuperating today. There was no uh, imminent danger, not, not like uh, my friend Lee here, who you can see his picture out his bedroom window as they watched the fire come up the, the draw uh, close to their house and then thankfully run out of fuel because it just hit dirt and when there's no, nothing to burn, there's nothing to burn. But um, I say praise God for our situation. Yeah. Yeah. Amazingly that so many thousands of people are given the opportunity to evacuate. We can say 40,000 people were warned but I'm not sure that 40,000 actually evacuated. Yeah. If you're part of uh, Lee's family. You stayed in place. You sheltered in place. There were several individuals uh, like where uh, Levon lives up off of White's Canyon that were asked but stayed. And uh, if you were the Cardenas family, uh, you were happy that your dad got up on the roof uh, with his hose and uh, hosed down the roof and the, around the house, uh, wet things down. And then this morning I learned that there were church members who were also involved in the Saddle Ridge fire and were able to, uh, to see that fire come very close to their, the house of themselves and or their family members who uh, you know, I did not know uh, lived close to them there in Porter Ranch. So uh, we, we are in the midst of it. It's not done yet in many respects. The season is not over. But I believe that if I had a couple of words to give to you today, one would be thankfulness. Thankfulness is what we do when we praise God for his blessings. We love that doxology, praise God from whom all blessings flow. This, I believe, is the way that we can recognize God's protection in our lives. Uh, I was coming home in one of the trips that I did up and down uh, Soledad this week and there was an accident right there at the bowling alley uh, where one car had smashed into another and it turned it sideways. It had just happened and was probably as a result of somebody doing something strange under these strange circumstances. Uh, one of the times that I was going towards Esther and Pedro um, uh, I was not allowed to go through the parking lot of the uh, shopping center there because there had been someone who was threatening police, potentially with a gun. Um, strange times, folks. Strange times deserve us to be, number one, on our knees, number two, uh, cooperating with uh, the, the agencies that are around trying to help 
and, and then also doing what Richard told us about, and that was being on the phone, asking who's out there, who's needing help, who do we need to be caring for. And yes, when I talked to David this week, uh, found out that David and his family uh, escaped with their house intact, but it did burn their backyard, which goes up the side of the hill. Okay, this is where we live. This is what I'm going to call today our situation. Okay, in our situation today, I believe we can praise God from whom all blessings flow. We can give him the recognition that he deserves. And I'm going to say this, for the strength that he has given our first responders, who, as, again, as I was riding up and down Soledad, I saw people from San Diego. I saw people from the north. So from the north and from the south of California, we have called in, and the radio told me yesterday that over 1,300 people have been involved in helping to keep us safe. So we are wanting to recognize that great organization, you know, when you pay your taxes, please understand that these are the moments when those tax dollars are saving your house. And uh, I have traveled, I have heard the, the, the Arabic, and uh, I have not been to Ethiopia, but I, I've been to France, and I've been to Spain, and I've been to Moldova and Central Europe, and it is not the same in all the world. The kind of protection, the kind of situation that we enjoy in this country should bring thankfulness to our hearts. It should bring thankfulness for the organization that we enjoy, thankfulness for a willing, a willing community uh, that has stepped forward and offered us help. I believe that we could say that this is evidence of character. This thankfulness, to, be, to have a thankful heart is evidence of character and I do believe that that also then shows commitment to following our leader. Because our leader, Jesus Christ, has told us that there would be times like this and that when these times come, that we should not be part of those whose, what does the Bible say, whose hearts fail within them. Why do they fail within them? Because they're afraid. Okay, I know that these were scary times that we joined, that, that, that we have enjoyed this week. And, and, and believe me, uh, uh, everyone was looking to take care of themselves, mostly. But then there were lots and lots of people who stepped up and who made sure that others in their community were warned. Uh, I, I was talking again uh, with one of our members this morning and she got a knock on her house in Porter Ranch at midnight. Hey, have you seen? It's time to go. Uh, unfortunately, the house across the street from her, uh, or, or across the street from her in-laws, which is just a, a ways away, they were also awoken at that same time and were barely able to get out before their house was taken by the flames. These are the things that cause, uh, 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 how shall I say, fatalities and injuries to be at the very least uh, low. And in, in the case of this fire, we are enjoying at the moment, so I've been told, zero fatalities. Can you say amen? Can you say, I am thankful to a God who has encouraged and has strengthened our people so that we have been saved in this community. The second word that I would bring to you today is generosity. So thankfulness and generosity. Uh, I believe that abundance, that's a favorite word of mine because I, I think that it's, it's, it's a hallmark, it's a hallmark of our God. He, he has resources. Uh, uh, Governor Newsom has uh, talked with uh, the president even and has been able to get federal funding for whatever our first responders need because we can be, and I believe, and I'm going to use the imperative here, I believe we should be generous. If we call ourselves God-fearers, if we are keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, I believe that there will be a generosity in our hearts that comes out at times like this. And again, I believe that our character 
our character is revealed not only personally but as a community and then also as a nation when we are under pressure. The stories that get told of the Second World War and other times when we have been under pressure as a nation, the stories have been told about how Americans come together under pressure and they get it done. I am proud of Santa Clarita to say that at this point, though we are not sure if everything is out, at this point we can say that people are safe and that we got it done. And again, I, I thank our, our first responders for being the ones on the front lines. But there are thousands of acts of generosity also that this community can now be characterized as a generous community, one that's willing to do anything that it takes and I believe that that is a reflection of the character of God. So thankfulness, generosity. The Father has these characteristics. And when his children act like this, it shows that they are indeed his children. We say in Psalm 23, as we walk. That's why I chose this psalm. And I want to thank Eric again for for expanding it into other languages. Can you imagine the Tower of Babel on that day when God came down and confused the languages? Oh my goodness, just think, we're all speaking English. Maybe English didn't exist uh, at that moment. <laughs> Quite possibly it was you know, some other language closer to Hebrew or, or something like that that was being spoken by everybody and then suddenly uh, the guy asking for a hammer is asking for it in French. I mean, so different, so crazy, but yet it's human. It's human. As we walk through the fire that we walked through or near to this week, as we watch the water being put on the fire, through life's, through life's ups and downs, we don't have to walk alone. That's another piece that really came home to me this week is that we don't walk alone. We are sheep of our Father's pasture. 23rd Psalm is a favorite. We like to say it, but I think this week we have actually been living it. We have been thanking God that we are part of his pasture. We've been thanking him that he has been protecting us. And we are, we are actually thankful that our character helps to show what he is like under pressure. He does not abandon people. He does not leave them. He looks after them. He leads them along. And so with great pleasure today, with great thankfulness in my heart, I say that I am a sheep in his pasture. So I guess today I would say that we celebrate. We're going to, we're going to have communion today, which is something we do on a, a semi-regular basis. We don't do it every week, um, and we do it in, in some specific ways. And so we have the opportunity as a community of faith today to serve each other, to be the hands and feet, literally, of God. To be the ones who pray for each other. This is what happens at the foot washing, which we're going to do next. We, we have that opportunity in our tradition. So I'm going to ask that if, if this is something that you don't normally do, that under these circumstances, after we've had the week that we have had, I'm going to say that it's a good time. It's a good time to choose somebody to pray for. And if you don't go and wash feet, please find somebody to pray for and, and have them pray for you because you know, we, we love to just skip over certain things, but they are moments of opportunity, my friends. They are moments of opportunity to say, God has been so good to me this week. I need to tell somebody, you know. I need to testify that God has been good to me. Tell somebody today. Please, and then also listen for those stories of loss. Look, listen for those stories of opportunity where you can step in in the name of Jesus. This is the opportunity that we have to serve each other today. And I really 
I'm just, I'm not, I'm not mad at anybody who doesn't take this opportunity. Believe me, it's your choice. But then we're going to come back and we're going to have the emblems and uh, we're going to sing and we're going to praise God. And again, I say that after the week that we have just had, there is no time like the present to be praising God, being thankful and being willing to say, I want that generous heart. I want that generous spirit. Amen. Let us separate at this time. We do have uh, the main uh, uh, MPR, the multi-purpose room for families. Uh, uh, we have H, which is a classroom over here in Oak uh, for the men. And the ladies are in the fireside room, if that is how you would like to serve each other today. Please, uh, if you want to just sit here, listen to uh, Lee play the piano. He, he is our best and we love him very much, and we're glad the fire did not come nigh thy dwelling. Amen. Let us separate.